Welcome to Nation's Very Star. My name is Angelo, your anchor. I told you we'll be doing lots of expositions this particular time, and um, we have one. This one is going to blow your mind. Yes, this one is going to blow your mind. This one is going to make you like you just get so annoyed with anybody in the government from start to finish. Now, from a very, very reliable source, I have a particular news update that you need to listen to. As you see on your screen, it reads, let me read from my source, how Bolatinobu got $100 million gift from Emefele, 25 billion naira to APC, ETC. Lots of you have been wondering why Godin Emefele was arrested and so on and so forth. You should be able to deduce the fact that because he is yet to be charged to court for the corruption he was um, in quote he was actually indicted for or he was um, or he had yet to be charged over the sponsorship the alleged sponsorship of terrorism that it was clamored for or clamor that he was announced to be sponsoring they just finally sued him to court for possession of firearms really <laughs> now listen to why let me read the central bank of nigeria cbn was the cash cow of the All Progressive Congress, APC, in the build up to the 2023 general elections. Former President Mamadou Buhari, at the tick of the campaigns, directed the CBN to release $100 million to a company linked to Bola Tinubu as part of his campaign funds. Someone close to Tinubu and Buhari has revealed. Listen, more updates. While Nigerians were crying over the scarcity of the new Naira notes, the All Progressive Congress, APC, collected 25 billion Naira through the former governor of Zamfara State, Abdulaziz Yari, the current governor of Kaduna State, Ubasani, and also got, 5 billion, also got 5 billion Naira from the CBN, while former governors Bello Motawale and Atiku Bagudu caught 2 billion naira each. The funds were collected under the guise of funding elections. More updates on the block. Now, when the DSS, that is the Directorate of the State Security, when the DSS arrested the former CBN governor, Godin Emifele, and charged him to, co to court for corruption, terrorism, and financing, they could not prosecute him for those charges because of the names found to have been benefited from the CBN under him. Instead, several weeks after he had been detained, they went back to his house in Lagos, found a gun, and then charged him to court for weapon possession. Can you now see how it all unfolded? Now, the DSS and the EFCC, or any other anti-corruption agency, cannot prosecute MFLA for corruption because of the billions of the APC government collected from him through the directives of former President Mamadou Buhari. If they deny, let them dare probe MFLA for corruption. This source is even daring the APC and the Bola Ahmed Tinubu-led government and his um, vice president, um, Senator Kashim Shetima, to probe Godin MFLA for corruption if what he's saying or if what is on this um, secret file is a lie. So, we used to give the government a test. Let us give them a test. Let's see if, whether or not, they will prosecute, finally, Godin Emefele for corruption. He has just been taken to court for illegal possession of firearms. So, let us see where that will take us. That is that on that particular update. I told you we will continue to bring them out until justice is done, until normalcy returns to Nigeria and until the populace in Nigeria really feel the impact of a new governor as a really strong or very superpower of let's say good dividends of political stability not just in Nigeria but in Africa as a whole. Now let me say precisely that I have something quite different. This video is I'm um, going to tell you more about the reason why Nasir El Rufai rejected the ministerial position from Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Recall that sometime two weeks ago, his name popped up. I had told you in my previous, in my previous updates that Nasir El Rufai's name was going to pop up as a ministerial nominee, but voila, 
His name pop up, popped up sometime last week, of course. He went for the screenings almost uh, to all the security agencies and then he came to the Senate where he met his Waterloo. Now, before I go further, I think I will give you that short video clip so you listen to Ojinika Okwei and um, Osendo Rufai in the studios while they analyzed and gave reasons why they felt Nasir El Rufai now had to decline the ministerial position, not just because the petition was filed against him. So watch this video. When I come back, I will give you the drastic the um, careful and then the political analysis of why we think Nasir El Rufai declined the ministerial post. Stay tuned. Former Governor of Kaduna State, who has been a subject of controversy after the National Assembly failed to approve his appointment as Minister of the Federal Republic, has reportedly withdrawn his interest in being part of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's cabinet. According to a report by Premium Times, El Rufai told Tinubu at a meeting on Tuesday that he was no longer interested in becoming a minister, but will continue to contribute his quota to the development of Nigeria as a private citizen. He also told the president that he needed time to focus on his doctorate program at a university in the Netherlands. Rufai, you know, I mean, we did take that story a couple of weeks ago where I brought up that old video where President uh, Tinubu at the time he was uh, uh, campaigning, uh, telling El Rufai or begging El Rufai to join his cabinet. But now, I mean, we can see that he has rejected the offer. I don't know what your thoughts are. At this so point. why the conundrum on the drama? Mm. So why make El Rufai go through DSS screening initially, then go through the Senate, then try to defend himself in the Senate, then now go through another security screening and say, I don't want it? I guess he didn't know they were going to send in that petition at the time. I think it's, I mean, petition yeah. or no petition. Yeah. The question is, why go through all those conundrums? Because the reason he's citing that is because he wants to go do his PhD in the Netherlands, based on the report. Mm. So if you want to go do your PhD in the Netherlands, why would you take it in the first place? And I think this also just goes to show how the government has not really done a good job as regards to ministerial screen mm. uh, uh, picks. Yeah. Because look at the drama. It's been one drama or the other. It's the late minute drama of pushing Keamo in. It's also the late minute drama of these three people that ever. So is it that the security authorities didn't screen them properly before? And I think this is a blight on the government. So I also hear he has also picked somebody that could be a possible replacement. So how about all the talk about him running the power ministry? How about the Itato meetings? That are already going on as regards the sideline. Well, so it speaks volumes about Nigeria. It's still a developing and, story and, too. Let's it's still a developing well, yeah. story. So, but let's see. Anyway, yeah. they said that's from their source. He's not right. officially come out to All announce right. first. Mm -hmm. So let's also give let's him that caveat. Yes. All right, you've watched the video and uh, we can't say much. Well, National El Rufai has boasted in a particular video that um, he can't have a godfather. Nobody actually can be his godfather. Well, that is different and then he said furthermore that he personally declined the position of the ministerial or the ministerial position so want to know why he actually got himself nominated at first why did you go through the dss screening why did you go through the screen at the efcc why did you go through the screen at the icpc and then he came to the senate and then a senator from koji state brought out a petition against you and now you're telling us that um you 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 declined the position. <laughs> there is something you are not telling us. Well, it is good that Nasir El Rufai and Bola Ahmed Tinubu now are not really going to be in good terms because this particular um, scenario surrounding this nomination sounds or seems to be like a sort of setup. Okay, we called you out so that so that you come and be disgraced in the, in the uh, within the general public. Well, I will not say much now. Um, Finally, uh, before I talk about the last update, I will urge our viewers, both old and new, like our videos, share them. Don't um, forget to drop a comment for us in the comment section. Don't forget to watch till the end. Please, if you're watching me for the first time, please do well to tap the notification bell and tap the subscribe button too, so that we'll get to link up. Finally, um, this company called Bua, Bua group of companies that produce sugar, they have um tankers they produce cement writing rice and i think i think um well all those things we don't even understand what they do but the truth is this company Bua have traded on a very very bad ground what have they done they have 
come in enmity with the government of River State because they have destroyed almost all the roads. Let me say, like one of the people said, they don't spoil all our roads finish. You understand? So, these people have cried out because they feel that the Boa group of companies have really brought damages to all the infrastructural development in River State. River State is known for good roads, you know, infrastructural development and so on. But they have said the Boa group have refused to let them rest. The Boa group have damaged all their roads, especially the roads that link to Imo State and the ones found close to the Boa group of companies situated in Port Harcourt. Let me let you watch that video so that you'll understand the gravity of offenses and the gravity of enmity between the River State government and the Boa group of companies. Stay tuned. This is something everybody will condemn all over the world. Everybody will condemn this act. Imagine the River State government has spent a lot of millions upon millions of money on doing roads. But a single company called Boa company with their truck, their trailers, in fact with their diesel, pouring on it, destroying and damaging the road. You can see the extent of the damage of this road caused by this company. Even at the front of their, their, their building or their estate or their office, you can see how deep it is. So compare the raining day, it means that vehicle cannot pass here. And this caused a lot of hold up on the road. Sir, you have also seen that there are other places where they park their vehicles. Are those places approved parks for them? It is not. Those places you are seeing, it is not approved. They, they, they behave or, or they operate as if they are the owner of River State. They see the, the government of River State as government that cannot query them. And that is why we are here, that there is government in this state. I feel heartbroken. I feel provoked that a company that does not even add value to River State in terms of corporate social responsibility would rather take from us infrastructure we've labored to put in place over the years. It's public knowledge that the River State government spends billions of Naira every year laboring very hard to provide critical infrastructure for our people. The Boa group have been so reckless. The drivers of the Boa group have been so irresponsible. They have converted our major roads to trailer parks. Right here, we are at Igrutali. We have a line of trailer park here of more than two, three kilometers. This major interstate road has now. Is this the road that leads you to the airport? This road that takes you out to Imo State and other states. It's a major interstate road. It's a critical infrastructure for us. Now see what they have done. Look at this is the front of their yard. Even the front of their yard is this dirty. Their parking is disorganized and very reckless. This is the walkway meant for this road. See the extent of damage caused. Look at it. All right, um, well, I wouldn't say much there. It, the, the, the solution is just so simple. I, I believe there are channels to take when you are addressing such an, such an issue as grievous as that. The River State government know what to do. You either sanction the uh, company management and then um, they know what to do or you put a ban on the company. Of course, these are civil issues and um, these kind of issues, if not properly handled, mostly lead to political instability and um, lack of diffusion of ideas, development and the growth of the economy in a particular state. But I trust um, Similar in Fubara, the governor of um, River State, um, to be a competent hand to address such an issue. Thank you so much for staying with us. From our table here, we'll be drawing the curtain. I'm going to bring you an expose on the enmity between Femi Bajabiamila and the new secretary to the federal government, George Akume. Stay tuned to Nation's Voice Tower. When next, I bring you an update. Bye.